Hello, we're Stephen and Elaine. We have a passion for traveling and love learning as much as possible about different places, cultures, and people as we travel the world. Thanks for joining us as we learn more about South Korean history. Today we visit Chang Yung Gong and Seoul Tower. If you want to see the first half of our day, watch our Gwangamun Square and Gyeongbok Palace video. In case you're not too familiar with Seoul, South Korea, it's about the size of Indiana. Its capital, Seoul, is half the size of New York State, with a population six times the size of Manhattan. We were pretty tired and hungry after walking around King Sejong's museum and the palace. Off in the distance, I saw Seoul Tower. Little did I know, it was further away than it looked. It was a two and a half mile walk, mostly on an incline. Once we got to the base of the hill that the tower is located on, there was a steep ascent. Our feet were hurting, we were exhausted, sweaty, and I have to be honest, I was a little hangry. As much as Elaine loves to travel, this day she was not that happy with me. After having several glasses of refreshing ice cold water and grabbing a snack at Hong Cook, the restaurant located on Tier 1, we went up to Tier 3, took in the beautiful views, and walked around the tower. Next, we started our two and a half mile walk back to Seoul Station. After a long train ride, we stopped at a local pizza shop where we found a ham and shrimp pizza. Yeah, I know. It was surprisingly delicious. It was that night that we decided Chengdeo would be the next palace. Chengdeo was a huge palace. It was designed by King Sejong, so it had a lot in common with the first palace we visited. One of the cool things about this palace is that it offers several traditional shows and English tours. We had some spare time, so we just enjoyed strolling around the serene paths. The palace grounds were extremely peaceful and beautiful. We had time before the first reenactment to walk around the Lotus Lake. The lake was full of koi fish and a family of ducks. It was interesting to see the dynamics between the koi fish and the ducklings. The koi fish were huge, which was a little too much for some of the ducklings, and they were separated from their mother. It was fun watching them be reunited. Next, we toured the Grand Greenhouse. While Korea was under Japanese rule, this area was turned into a zoo. It has since been restored to its amazing origins and houses thousands of different plant species. We were lucky enough to catch one of these reenactments. They only do them on Fridays, so we were thankful we chose the right day. In a moment, you will see the reenactment of King Taejong, King Sejong's father, touring the five palaces with him. We loved seeing the traditional wardrobes and weapons from the early 1400s and getting a glimpse into the palace's past. If you ever go to Chengdeo, be sure to watch the reenactments. They are amazing. <laughs> 유아 김한구의 딸인 정순 왕우십니다. 자 여러분 이제 저와 함께 집포컨 영춘원으로 이동하시겠습니다. 집포컨은 왼쪽에 보이는 저 건물입니다. 자 저와 함께 가시죠. 's long progression was impressive. As a person who has to be very careful about sunlight exposure, I was envious of the guy following the king around with a parasol. 
We're not sure what this next show was called, but it was spectacular. Every structure in this palace had a well-known purpose. Some of them were homes and libraries, of course. Others were designed only for the king and his court to study and discuss politics. The main gate has a symbolic meaning for kings and government officials because of the name, which literally means fish cannot live without water, but is usually understood as the ruler should always put his people first. We met up with an English tour guide and he explained the importance and superstitions of the stone gates. So, traces of the hinge of this rock. Yeah, we can see there were doors in the past, back in the Joseon dynasty. So, you may wonder why this gate was made of stone. So, whenever the king was entering this long gate, then his subjects and his people made their wishes that the king will live for long without getting sick and all like this unchanging stone gate. Also, they believe this Roman stone gate could give the eternal blessing of youth, anyone who passes through the gate. So, like the meaning of it, uh, after you enter this gate, all of you will not get old anymore. <laughs> this gate is very nice. <laughs> okay, then, let's do it. Give it a try. <laughs> Huan, or the secret garden, was built as a leisure space for the royal family to enjoy when going outside the palace was considered impossible or very difficult. The Huan consisted of several pavilions that offered shade and a nice place to read or study. One of the most interesting inventions we came across were these braided hemp cushions that lined the dirt paths on the hills of the palace. They give traction on rainy wet days when footing would be difficult. We hope you enjoyed exploring this beautiful palace and Seoul Tower with us. Join us in the future as we explore more spectacular things on this awesome planet. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe below to help us fund more amazing adventures as we travel the world. If you want to see the first half of our day, watch our Gwangamun Square and Gyeongbok Palace. <laughs>